Beatrice the Biologist here. Welcome to my first vlog thing. I will be doing these occasionally, not in lieu of my usual comics and lengthy discussions about farts, but just an additional experimental thingamadoob. I will be using this format here to talk about science news, other science blogs I like, other science comics, as well as perhaps some other science video games or science books that I'm really enjoying. I just said science a lot just then. I will also be starting every episode with an extraordinary organism. This week's extraordinary organism is a cavia porcellus, otherwise known as a guinea pig. And I have one right here. His name is Ziggy, and he is not named after Ziggy Marley, but is named after an obscure movie reference from Ghostbusters 2. Isn't that right, Ziggy? Yo. That was actually the line from the movie. Venkman says it to, to Egon when they're digging the hole, he calls him Ziggy. Don't worry about it. No one, no one would know that. Fun fact about guinea pigs, they, like us, cannot make their own vitamin C, so they have to get it from their diet. And if they don't get it in their diet, they get scurvy. Scurvy, scurvy. Well, get that vitamin C, you. Almost all other mammals can synthesize their own vitamin C. He's hungry. The vitamin C underachievers group is us, guinea pigs, capybaras, which are basically big, giant guinea pigs, most kinds of bats, and our great ape and close monkey relatives. Vitamin C underachievers, unite. So yeah. What if he's gonna poop on the table? This will all be edited out. <sighs> Okay? I'm sorry, I'm really distracted by the guinea pig. Oh! Oh! Goodness. Are you okay, sir? Are you okay? Science news! Boo! 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 Researchers have sequenced the genome of a girl that died in Siberia 50,000 years ago from a little piece of bone from her finger. Uh, amazing. From her DNA, they can tell she had brown hair a coughing guinea pig, brown eyes, and dark skin. She was not, however, human. She was a Denisovan, which is an extinct early relative of ours, kind of like Neanderthals. Hmm. Now that they have the whole genome, they might be tempted to clone her like they did in Jurassic Park, but I really hope that Jeff Goldblum talks him out of it this time. I know he can do it. Now the cool science comic of, the, of this episode is Maki Naro, who draws comics at science.org. Not science. Science.org. One of my favorite comics of his is about what it's like when you're going up an escalator that's not moving, and how your brain sort of tricks you and makes you feel kind of dizzy because you're expecting it to move. It's really good. You should read it. I put the link below. Lastly, a book recommendation. Now this book is not new. And in the future, my book recommendations will be much more current. However, it's a great book, and I know a lot of people that haven't read it, and so I really feel like everyone needs to know. It's called A Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson. You should definitely read this. It's got some really cool anecdotes about, about researchers for the last couple hundred years and really cool science stories. He will make you laugh and make your brain explode, and it's a great time. And, and I'm serious about the laughing. I have to be careful when I read Bill Bryson books in public. I look like a crazy, crazy person because I'm laughing so much. Guinea pigs love it as well. So, hey, excuse me. So that is it for this first Beatrice vlog. Thank you for being here with me and finding out what is going on. I'll let you know when I know. Bye. Am I in the frame? Is my whole head in it, though? Yeah. Yeah? Well, um, the top is missing.